Okay, so first I would like to thank the organizers uh, for the opportunity to present today. And uh, second, I would like to briefly introduce myself. So I did uh, my master's and PhD in Ori Alon's lab at the Weizmann Institute, uh, and we developed a model to predict effective and synergistic drug cocktails uh, to treat infectious diseases and uh, cancer. And then I proceeded uh, to a postdoc uh, position at the Hood Price Lab in the Institute for Systems Biology. And this is the work that I will uh, present today. Uh, recently, I joined also Gavin's Halle um, in the Fred Hodge Cancer Research Center. And uh, over here, whoops, sorry, uh, we infer um, transcription regulation from um, circulating tumor DNA from blood biopsies uh, for uh, advanced cancer research and uh, precision oncology. And so as I mentioned earlier, I will present the work that I did uh, during my time in ISB, uh, the geometry of clinical labs and wellness states uh, from deeply phenotyped humans. And this is an overview figure of the study. Basically, we are doing a very interesting analysis on a unique uh, cohort. And I would like to first start with explaining what is the cohort. Uh, Aravel was a spin-off company that uh, came out of our lab. It provided a wellness program to its participants. Uh, the participants gave blood and stool samples every six months. And the uh, professional coaches uh, guided uh, the participants based on these measurements, what they need to change in their lifestyle in order to increase wellness. And the, the participant also signed a consent that allowed us to use this uh, information for research. And this is how we got thousands of uh, data clouds or personal dense dynamic data clouds that includes a uh, microbiome, proteomics, uh, metabolomics, genomics, um, uh, clinical lab self-reported questionnaires and Fitbit uh, activity tracker information. And there were over 5,000 participants. Each participant had between one to eight time points. And this is an extremely high dimensional uh, data set over 30,000 uh, variables. And though it's extremely also uh, valuable for research, it also comprises a major challenge in terms of uh, data analysis, interpretation, and visualization. And uh, to overcome these challenges, uh, I used uh, the Pareto task inference method that was developed in Uri Alon's lab. Um, the method started with the notion that uh, many times high dimensional data uh, when it's presented in, uh, in scientific papers, uh, the data falls on simple shapes like a line, a triangle, or a tetrahedron in 3D. And according to the method, this is not by chance. This is, according, uh, this is because of evolutionary uh, trade-offs. Uh, and therefore, if you have high dimensional data that fall, falls on a significant uh, simple shape, significant according to significant test that is uh, provided, then we would say that the vertices are archetypes uh, that specializes in a certain task. And there, there is a trade-off between the tasks. And therefore, individual entity, like individual cell or individual human being, cannot be optimal in performing two tasks at the same time. And this is how, the, because of the trade-off, and this is why the data is confined into these uh, simple shapes. So now this overview figure is much more clear. After data normalization and, and cleaning, uh, I returned 3,000 clients. I used uh, the clinical labs uh, measurements, 67 blood measurements, and I found uh, that, this, that, that this data set fall on a significant tetrahedron with four vertices. Then I used all other data types in order to characterize um, uh, the, the archetypes and reveal the trade-offs in the system. More specifically, we're looking for traits that are uh, enriched or high close to an archetype. And as you move away to any direction, this, the trait decays. And we do this enrichment analysis for every archetype separately using all the, the, the variables. And this is how we get lists of um, enriched features next to every archetype. And this is how we characterize the archetypes. This is how the real data and the significant tetrahedron looks like. And uh, the enrichment analysis uh, revealed three wellness states. The first one uh, was healthy individuals that were enriched also for all their ages. They were enriched for uh, being married and having grandchildren, and enriched in general, enriched for uh, traits uh, that um, 
uh, resemble wellness, like uh, high levels of omega-3, vitamin D, HDL, and low levels of disease risk uh, factors, like low levels of uh, lipids and low levels of diabetes markers, like insulin, and, uh, HOMA IR, uh, glucose, and so on. In general, uh, this, uh, uh, this, the participant close to this art type reported that they feel uh, well, they are satisfied from their life and the wellness state and in general in life. The second R type was enriched for younger uh, females. Again, a uh, high level uh, of uh, wellness markers and low levels of disease markers, uh, but also low levels of hemoglobin, hematocrit, red blood cells that characterize females. They were enriched for vegetarian diet, and in general, they were physically active, they were healthy, and they um, reported that they are uh, satisfied from their life, their appearance, but also reported that they experience um, stress and uh, mood changes. The third archetype was enriched for males, and um, in the, the opposite uh, picture from the females, they had high levels of hemoglobin, red blood cells, and ferritin, uh, which characterize males. And uh, they were enriched for animal-based uh, diet, and this is why uh, we can see here also high levels of omega-6 and uh, lipids like LDL. Uh, but they had low levels of diabetes uh, markers like insulin, uh, glucose, uh, etc. They were enriched for uh, consuming alcohol on, the, on a daily basis with a preference for beer as the alcohol type. And they were the least responders. So for the uh, self-reported questionnaires, uh, there was an option to leave it blank. And the blank option was uh, enriched for many uh, traits uh, close to these archetypes, to this archetype, sorry. Um, the fourth archetype is the, the most distinctive archetype. Uh, we call it the aberrant health archetype. Also, by Euclidean distance, uh, distance is uh, the most far away. And um, it basically captures uh, the uh, aspects of moving away from wellness. And um, 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 individuals that are close to that archetypes, uh, they are not necessarily diagnosed with any disease, uh, but they have high levels of disease markers, uh, like high uh, BMI, high leptin, high lipids, high insulin, and low levels of the good stuff, or the, of low levels of microbiome diversity, omega-3, vitamin D. An individual close to this archetype reported that they are not feeling well, and uh, they suffer from, um, uh, from uh, diarrhea, reflux, etc. And in general, they are not satisfied from their appearance and their wellness state. And this analysis revealed three major axes of variation. The first axis of variation splits the data according, according to wellness state. The second axis of variation split the data according to age. And the third one according to gender. This is another analysis that shows uh, the trade-off in the system which I'll skip and move up to the last part uh, where we use longitudinal data and uh, to track the movement of individual uh, participants uh, over time on the tetrahedron. And we use this, uh, these trajectories, these individual tra trajectories to monitor individuals' health and detect transition from health to disease and by vice versa. By definition, if uh, there is an individual uh, trajectory like this one, if individual is getting closer to the unhealthy archetypes, it means high level, higher levels of disease risk factors, and vice versa. If an individual is getting away or moving away from um, the unhealthy archetype uh, to, towards the healthy uh, plane, we, we will say uh, we will see that uh, there is an increase in uh, wellness markers, um, which uh, was uh, the majority of the cases in our cohort because it was an, a wellness program. However, we had uh, several unusual uh, trajectories like this one. Uh, we had the pink trajectory where we have a uh, five out of the six uh, time points exceed the boundaries of uh, the tetrahedron. This trajectory belongs to a 64 year old woman that was diagnosed with stage three uh, bladder cancer. And um, this is unique also because usually uh, solid malignancies are not reflected in the canonical clinical labs. Uh, and also in a different outlier analysis, uh, when, when you look on her individual me blood measurements, none of her blood measurements was detective, detected as an outlier. But her uh, overall profile, and uh, when you use this uh, Pareto archetype analysis and you use uh, the method, you can see how unusual is her trajectory, and um, that it's that it also it shows that there is something unusual about this uh, patient. Sorry. 
And with that, I would like to uh, thank my mentors and everyone who took, um, who helped uh, in this uh, work. And that's it. Thank you, Anat. Uh, do we have any questions from our attendees in the Q&A or panelists? And if not, I have a question. So mm -hmm. your archetypes, one of the archetypes is the unhealthy one, and but there's only one. So does that mean that they're like most unhealthy uh, um, scenarios actually go in the same direction? If we're not talking about, you know, these outliers of cancer, do, do they really have all these uh, features in common? And so basically what we, what we see in this analysis it what is uh, the diseases that are reflected in the blood. Uh, so it's mainly cardiovascular disease that we can see according to the lipids levels. And we can see uh, um, um, uh, diseases like uh, diabetes uh, according to uh, insulin, uh, glucose, and, and so on. So these are, these are the diseases that we can see um, in, in, in the, from, this, uh, from this data set. Uh, if we will use a different data set, if we will use a different cohort, where that, uh, for instance, um, everybody are vegetarians or everybody are a cancer um, patients, we might see different shapes and we might see a different uh, number of states and, and so on. So, Okay, uh, we have another question, Tal. Yes, hello. Hi, Anat, great talk. Hi. Thank you. Um, so I was wondering about creating these archetypes. Um, the, you use uh, some kind of omics um, information. Um, how can I know that um, the omics layer that I want to use is the best one? Like, do you, um, yeah, <laughs> which one? <laughs> So basically, you don't know. <laughs> and uh, for so in this uh, project, I basically tried every omic separately to see if I can find um, if I can find a uh, structure in the data. Um, I can tell you that uh, the clinical labs are the ones that are um, most uh, normalized. Uh, the variability and the error measurements is like uh, this is uh, the easiest uh, measurements, uh, easy to handle, easy to process, easy to normalize. Um, other other um, data types like uh, metabolomics and uh, in the metabolomics, for instance, you have many many metabolites that are and that they, they are even unknown, and the uh, and the detection level and the method itself to me to measure has a, a high higher uh, error, and this is, and when you have high error, then uh, you get like a like a cloud uh, of data and you don't get uh, this uh, structure. Um, so if you need to, if you have like a notion if, and if you know and you have, you get to choose, I would take um, the, the omic that is like uh, well normalized, well characterized, easy to handle, and I will apply this and I will use all the other data types in order to characterize the, the different archetypes like I did. Okay. Uh, 